What's going on guys? Clickwood here back again with another Madden 15 Ultimate Team video and today guys what I want to talk to you about is the brand new positional sets that were added to Madden 15 this afternoon. Guys we got a new left tackle and a new cornerback. The left tackle Joe Thomas 99 overall. Now a lot of people are kind of upset that Joe Thomas got this card but you know to me I'm not that surprised. He's He's been rock solid for so long. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I yeah I saw he is not allowed, he's allowed two sacks in over a thousand snaps. That is absolutely insane. This card, it, it, this player is amazing, and it makes sense that he would have such a good card as well. 98 strength, 96 run block, 100 pass block, unbelievable. But what I want to do today is compare the new items that came into the game with some of the best items at their position. So well, let's start off here with Joe Thomas and let's compare him with Anthony Munoz, the previously best left tackle in this game. All right, guys, so here it is, Joe Thomas versus Anthony Munoz. Let's compare them over on Mudhead.com. Uh, we can actually take a look at their individual attributes on each of these cards. Obviously, Anthony Munoz a 97, Joe Thomas the first 99 left tackle in this game. We're expecting Joe Thomas to be better, right? But I didn't expect him to be this much better. Joe Thomas is literally better in every single attribute. Every single attribute that we care about. It's unbelievable. I've never seen this much of a substantial upgrade from one best of at a position to the next best of at the same position. It's crazy. Joe Thomas has 98 strength. Anthony Munoz, 97 strength. That's the first thing that I look at for an offensive lineman, really at any position. Then I go down here and I compare run block and pass block. Now, again, guys, run block footwork, pass block footwork, pass block strength, run block strength. Those attributes literally are irrelevant. We've seen this on Mythbusters before, Madden 15 Mythbusters. If you guys are interested, make sure that you look that up. Search for Madden 15 Mythbusters offensive line, and you'll see my video on that where I break that down and explain why those attributes are literally irrelevant in Mutt. And also, uh, EA did also confirm that as well, so that is true. But, again, run block, pass block are the things that we care about. Again, Joe Thomas better than him at one, at both of those two attributes, uh, 100 pass block versus 99 pass block. Crazy, crazy stuff. 95 impact block versus 92 impact block as well. So Joe Thomas is going to do a good job at knocking guys on their butts as well. Now, the thing that I found to be most interesting and the biggest substantial upgrade between these two cards, speed and acceleration. Joe Thomas, 13 higher in speed. And uh, also, uh, let's see here, what was it? Uh, 15 higher for acceleration. That's right. So yeah, 28 combined speed and acceleration difference between these two cards. Crazy, crazy difference. If you're expecting your your uh, left tackle to go out there and make blocks in the second level or get out there and kick out and, and take out a cornerback or something on a given play if you're running a sweep or something like that, this is definitely the card for you because he is going to do a great job in both of those areas. Like I said, I've never seen a bigger upgrade from one best of at a position to the newest one. So uh, yeah, this card is definitely the best left tackle in this game. It's not even remotely close and uh, I don't expect anything to pass it up or even come close until the ultimate legend comes out at the position, which I'm expecting to either be like a Walter Jones and Orlando Pace, somebody like that, uh, which should be fairly comparable to Joe Thomas. I'm not expecting it to be significantly better. So if you're looking for an amazing left tackle, this could be the best one in the game for the rest of the game, potentially. It's that, it's that, that good. So yeah, I think Joe Thomas is definitely worth the coins right now. Uh, you saw on my screen that he was going for about 680000 on PlayStation 4. That was the only one that was actually on at that point in time on the auction block. But it's going for more around like 500000 or somewhere in that range. 500, 550. So uh, don't overpay on this thing, but definitely go out there and acquire it if you're looking to build the best ultimate team that you can. Now, with that being said, let's go over and compare Patrick Peterson uh, to the new items that that are in the game, or uh, the new Patrick Peterson that's in the game, to the other best cornerbacks that have been in the game, which are Night Train Lane and Richard Sherman. Let's start off, though, with Richard Sherman. Okay, guys, here it is. Richard Sherman versus Patrick Peterson. 99 Patrick Peterson, 99 Richard Sherman. Both amazing cards. I'm not going to say that they aren't at all. Uh, both of them are absolutely ridiculous. But we want to compare and see which one is worth the money and which one is better. So right now, Patrick Peterson, I think, is going for about 860000 over on the PlayStation 4, which is actually a little bit cheaper than what I saw Richard Sherman for. So that's kind of interesting. Mudhead's saying that, that Patrick Peterson's a little bit higher, but I think that's because they haven't quite updated their prices over the past few hours. So let's scroll down here and see. Um, no, obviously, first of all, Richard Sherman is six foot three versus Patrick Peterson at 6'1". That's something that we have to keep in mind. But 
The Richard Sherman does also have a little bit lower as far as the uh, the jumping here. He's only a 96 versus Patrick Peterson being a 97. Awareness, Richard Sherman's a little bit higher at a 90 versus an 88. But Patrick Peterson's going to make up for it in some of those areas because he does have 98 speed and 99 acceleration. So he is going to be two speed faster, one acceleration faster than Richard Sherman. Most people really like the speed out of their players. I'm one of those people. And also Patrick Peterson does a great job with he has a substantially higher strength here. He has a 72 strength versus a 68 strength, which is also going to help him with this press down here where he has a 95 press. Richard Sherman's actually a little bit higher with a 96 uh, press, but they're both very, very good in those attributes. Now, the other thing, Patrick Peterson's a little bit better in run support. Although his tackling is lower at a 70 or a 67 versus a 72, he does have better hit power and he also has better pass rushing moves if you ever in that situation where you're engaged with a lineman or a linebacker or a, a, a running back or anything like that. He's going to do a good job with blitzing but his block shedding is substantially higher his pursuit is is a little bit higher as well and uh, he still has great play, play recognition so to me he's going to do a little bit better in the run support than Richard Sherman does and also he has great man coverage at a 99 so if you like running man coverage with your cornerbacks yeah Patrick Peterson's not going to be beat in that area Unfortunately, he does lag a little bit behind with that 96 zone coverage versus Richard Sherman at a 97. Most people are running zone at this point in time, so it does make sense uh, that some people would potentially go with a Richard Sherman. I personally would say that I would go with Patrick Peterson. Uh, the other thing that I really like about Patrick Peterson is that he does have higher attributes as far as with the ball in his hand, which makes sense considering he's such a good punt returner, but he has great elusiveness, uh, great even spin move and uh, juke move, carrying's a little bit higher. All those types of things are better than Richard Sherman. So if he does get the interception or if you're using him as your punt returner, he's going to do an amazing job, Richard Sherman. Not quite as good, but still better than most cornerbacks. So again, it's a matter matter of personal opinion here, but I'm going to go with Patrick Peterson over Richard Sherman. Let me know what you guys think, though, in the comment section below. I'm interested to hear what you have to say on this topic. The other card that I want to compare him to here is, boom, Night Train Lane. Again, the best cornerback in this game, most people would say, coming into today. Let's compare him against Patrick Peterson to see if he still stands up as the best cornerback in the game. First of all, they're both 99 overall, obviously. Both six foot one as well, which is kind of interesting. Now, Patrick Peterson is a little bit higher with jumping. He does have a 97 versus a 96 in the jumping category. So he is going to do a slightly better job against those lob streaks. He's also a little bit faster at a 97 or at a 98, excuse me, versus Night Train Lane at a 96. And he also has 99 acceleration versus a 98 for acceleration for Night Train Lane. So Night Train Lane and uh, Richard Sherman, very, very comparable in those two attributes, whereas Patrick Peterson's a little bit higher than both of them. So he is great in all of those attributes, but Night Train Lane is going to be substantially better in some of these things. First of all, run support, it's not even close. We talked about Patrick Peterson being better than Richard Sherman in run support, but Night Train Lane blows them both way out of the water. It's not even remotely close. Here it is, 77 again for strength versus Patrick Peterson at 72, which by the way is very good for a cornerback 72. Uh, but you go down here, hit power, tackling. 23 higher in tackling for Night Train Lane, 17 higher for hit power. Then you take a look at the block shedding, 15 higher than Patrick Peterson. Unbelievable. Nine higher for pursuit, five higher for play recognition. Oh my goodness. That is just ridiculous. He is unfreaking believable against the run. Probably the best cornerback that they're going to have is unless he ends up being the ultimate legend for cornerback which is possible um but yeah dude he is absolutely unbelievable against the run it's crazy now he also has higher catching which i find to be very interesting here a 92 for catching over patrick peterson at an 85 which again is very very good for a cornerback but he is also higher in that category unfortunately he is lower in press and man coverage but He's higher in the zone coverage than Patrick Peterson. So to me, overall, I personally believe that I would go with Night Train Lane, despite the fact that, again, he's going to be a little bit lower than Patrick Peterson in some of these areas for like returns and things like that. He's actually still a little bit better than Richard Sherman in those attributes, but uh, he doesn't quite stack up to Patrick Peterson with the ball in his hand, but he's going to get the ball in his hand more often because he has the higher play recognition and that, that type of thing. So to me... 
I personally like Night Train Lane better because to me, he's going to be a better overall cornerback because he's going to do great still in the passing game, but he's going to be significantly better in the running game, which is very, very important in my personal opinion. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this comparisons. If you did, please let me know in the comment section below. I want to hear about it. I want to know if you guys are liking these comparisons. If you do, I'll try and do them more often. I really do like going in and comparing card to card and seeing which one is worth the coins, uh, seeing which one is the best in the game. It's always interesting interesting to me. So I hope it is to you guys as well. If you do enjoy the video, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel if you are new. And of course, guys, uh, I will always be uh, interested to hear your comments and, and uh, give me any sort of feedback that you have on these videos. I, I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye-bye.